Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Happy, happy Tuesday. Happy, happy Tuesday. You thought I forgot, right? Because I'm late. You thought. You thought wrong. I'm her. I'm just saying, I'm her. Okay, hold on. I'm looking for the comments. You know it takes me a minute to find them. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Where are they at? I'm looking. Comments. Okay, they just haven't started coming through yet. All right. Da -da 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 -da. Let me send these to the right groups. Hold on. Here we go. Okay, I think I got everything situated. Hold on. Oh, cool, Andrea. You're a vacation Bible school? That's awesome. I love that. That's awesome. All right, so hello, everybody. Welcome to, you know, even for you people who don't want no Jesus, by the time I get done, you're going to want a little bit of Jesus. That's all I'm going to say. So, you know, quit fighting it. Jesus loves you, okay? Quit fighting it. All right. So, for those of you who are here, hold on. I'm trying to get my phone. My phone is not cooperating. It does that from time to time. So, I'm going to put it over here. So, if you're here, let me know you're here. Um, if you watch this replay, let me know, hashtag replay, that you're on the replay. Um, this doesn't take very long. We're only on here a few minutes. Um, hey, Angela, how are you? It's just me. Hi, Diane. Sharing some inspiration, sharing a little Jesus with you. Um, maybe something that's going to help you through your day to let you know that you're not alone. Um, for me, that has been huge over the last year. And, you know, it's real easy to fall on your knees when times are hard and to ask people for prayer when times are hard. I get it. Um, but I think what's crazy is life is not easy right now. And I think that if we all took the, took the direction that said maybe if we kept a little bit more Jesus in our life, through every day, that when the hard times come, because they are going to come, whether Jesus is in your life or not, they is going to come, okay? And um, I think sometimes it makes it a little bit easier to know that even when things are out of control, that God is still there. So um, I'm hoping that these are helping some of you. I know I'm sharing this to various groups. I know my VIP group my onward group for all reps and my team onward but i know that you guys don't share all your struggles with me and that's okay and onward you assume they just have to be about avon right and it's closed out tuesday guys right so we're all busy working trying to get everybody to place their orders i'm feeling you okay but sometimes sometimes there's so much more going on stuff with your health stuff with your kids maybe you and your husband are arguing um, maybe it's finances, maybe it's problems within the family, maybe there's discord in your workplace, um, maybe it's just something with you that you're not feeling good enough, whatever that looks like for you. Uh, but I just want to make sure that you know that you are aware that you're not alone. And, and I don't just mean Jesus when I say that, I mean that I believe God puts people in our lives to sometimes help or share things that may help us get to a better place or give us a different perspective. Um, if you're somebody and you're watching this and you're just, you're, you're what I would call Jesus angry or God angry and you're just angry at him because you didn't like the, the outcome of something in your life. I want you to know I get that too. Um, it's so much easier to just blame God for things that happen instead of embracing the fact that he is there to help us get through. I don't know anywhere in the Bible that it says that life is going to be easy. And if you've lived as much life as I have for 59 years, I'm here to tell you 
it's not easy, no matter what your walk with him is. Maybe you don't walk with him at all. Maybe you don't believe. Um, it's okay. It's okay. But I'm hoping that this is going to help. So for those of you who need this, um, I hope that this will help you today. Um, last year at this time on May 23rd, um, I was right in the midst of what was going on with me and finding out I had a mass on my kidney and it was um it was difficult it was very very difficult and of course Lori Yannick one of my um one of my Avon sisters sent me this Jesus always I love Sarah Young she's amazing and these are just short little devotionals and the verse that this is based off of says in Philippians 4 13 which is one of my favorite verses in the Bible it says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me now let me tell you I don't see anywhere in that that it says because I love Jesus nothing bad is ever going to happen to me because I follow the Lord because I go to church because I believe in God that means nothing bad is going to happen to me. That's not what it says. I believe that this is a verse of preparation. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, which means if there's a death in the family, if there's a horrific event, if you get sick, that he is there to walk through it with you if you let him. But if you're putting all your energy into just being angry at the situation instead of just saying, I'm going to face this, but I don't have to face it alone. I can share it with people that I love. And, you know, those people that are in your life are not there by mistake. They're there to help you, to help you through, for sure. Let me see who else is on here. Hold on. Hey, Shauna, how are you? Hello, Lori. Hi, Rebecca, eating breakfast with you until I head out to be with my boys for the day. Happy birthday, Rebecca Furbish. Today is her birthday, everybody. Wish her a happy birthday. And Rebecca, do you know that your birthday is also on my brother Mark's birthday? He is 65 today. And Chad, my great nephew, but I just call him my nephew, but he is great, right? Chad's birthday is today. Um, so lots of people have birthdays today that I love and care about. And um, so happy birthday, everybody, if it's your birthday today. Um, next verse is Psalm 62.8. Trust in him at all times, old people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Trust in him at all times. It doesn't say trust in him when everything is easy. It doesn't say... It doesn't say, trust in him when the road is smooth. It doesn't say, trust in him only during the bumpy times. It says, trust in him, period. Trust in him at all times. And I do believe <clears throat> that for me, and when I speak, guys, I'm not speaking for you. I'm speaking for me. I feel like that I was the believer who, when times were bad, I had no problem reaching out to God You've heard me tell the story of when I was going through my first divorce, that I was sitting on the steps outside my uh, oldest brother's house, and I'm praying to God, show me what you want me to do. I feel like a complete failure to my kids. I couldn't make this marriage work, blah, blah, blah. Really, really bad time. I can remember when um, my niece was in a bad car accident. Please, God, please heal her. I remember when mom was dying of cancer. Please, God. I remember when my brother Mikey was in the hospital. And, um, you know, I feel, I can tell you the times that I dropped to my knees in my life. Some of them being the worst of times. Um, but what I find is different about my walk now is with this cancer scare that, that I had last year. Which, by the way, if you didn't catch my updates, scans were completely clear. Um, kidney functions were completely awesome. And I only have to go back once a year for recheck for the next five years. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, doctors at Wake Forest. Um, I believe God put all those people in my path, including you. So I used to drop to my knees during the bad times. But this, this time, this time I decided to do things a little different. This time I decided that instead of only keeping God in my life during the bad times and talking to him then, 
I decided that I was going to make an effort to try to build a relationship with him, to try to build a conversation with him, to let him talk to me through his word and through devotions and to remind me that he's always there. Because here's the deal. If you're not always talking to that somebody in your life, no matter who that is, you don't really know where they stand with you. You don't get the reinsurance of there. If Lee did not always tell me that he loved me and if he was somebody who just always had an issue saying that, I would always doubt whether he loved me. Why is he here with me? You know, what, you know, we, having a relationship with God it's much like having a relationship with the people in your life. The more you talk to them, the more you hear what he has to say to you, it becomes better. It becomes clearer. But to just say that you believe and then you all only just call on him during the hard times, look, he's, he, he listens to you and he tries to be there for you. But having a relationship that's through the good times and the bad times, that has made such a difference in my life um, over the last year. And I mean things like um, our company ran into some really, really rough times, and we're still trying to get out of that, right? And um, I love my company. Um, but we've been in hard times before, but the struggle for me was a lot worse in past times because I absolutely believe that God knows what he's doing and I believe that um, I believe that when I have a relationship with him he helps me be calmer about things he helps me to be level-headed about things because I have to believe that no matter what he knows he knows and no matter what he's gonna walk me through anything in my life um, Psalms 105 Four says, seek the Lord in his strength, seek his face continually. See, there we go. Have a relationship all the time. But here's the devotion, and I hope this speaks to you. When the way just ahead of you seems too difficult, turn to me and say, I can't. But we, you and I together, can. Acknowledging your inability to handle things on your own is a healthy dose of reality. However, this is only one part of the equation because a sense of inadequacy by itself can be immobilizing. The most important part of the equation is recognizing my abiding presence with you and my desire to help you. Pour out your heart to me. Ask me to carry your burdens and show you the way forward. Don't waste energy worrying about things that are beyond your control. That is so me. I'm always worrying about what I can't control. But now, I'm learning just to give it to God. God, I don't have any control over this, but I know you know it all. So I'm going to give this to you because I'm just aging myself and needing more skin care. <laughs> if I keep worrying about this. Don't waste energy worrying about things that are beyond your control. Instead, use that energy to connect with me. Seek my face continually. Be ready to follow wherever I lead, trusting me to open up the way before you as you go. Trusting me to open up the way before you as you go. Dare to see your inadequacy as a door to my presence. View your journey as an adventure that you share with me. Remain in close communication with me and join my company as we journey together. Wow. You guys hear me say all the time, I talk to Jesus just like I talk to you. Now, there are some people out there who would say to me, Molly, that's kind of disrespectful if you're talking to Jesus the way you're talking to me. Nope, nope. Because he's my friend, and he brings peace into my life. And when I can look at him and go, oh, Lord, what is going on? This, 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 and this is happening. I know you know, Jesus, okay? I can't fix this. 
And I don't know if you choose to fix it, but what I'm going to do is give this to you, and I'm just going to keep walking my day because I can't do anything about this. And I find that when I do that, instead of spending the next three hours worrying about that thing I can't control, that when I just give it to him, it moves me forward to do exactly what I need to do, which is continue living my life and working on the things I can control, like me and how I react. So it's become something for me that when people say, I, I just don't get you, why aren't you as upset about this as I am? Well, because I can't control it. Um, things that are going on in the world today, the way that people are go at each other, the way people are, are, are just spewing hate, and, um, and their attitude is my way or the highway or my belief or get out of my life. That's no way to be. And, and, and for all my Jesus friends who believe that you're supposed to cast somebody out of your life because they don't believe the way that you believe, shame on you. Because you're not giving Jesus a very good name. Your job is not to judge. Your job is to love. Your job is to share the love of God with other people. Your job is not to judge them and make them feel horrible about themselves or to make them doubt themselves more. As the song says, leave the judging to Jesus. It's not up to us. My job is to love you and my job is to show you how much better a relationship can be if you have God in your life. And I know many of you are going through a whole lot right now and you don't, you don't want to, um, it's almost like you don't want to feel better. It's almost like you don't want to let go of the burden. You want to hold it. You know, you're like, I've just got to hold on. I got to fix this. Quit being the fixer with things that you can't fix. It's not up to you to fix, but start praying about it. That's what I do. I pray about it. Um, when things are going on with my family that I can't control, that I can't make better, I pray about it. I give it to Jesus. I say, I want to be there for anybody who needs me. I want to be there if they want to talk. But my job is not to judge them. My job is to love them through it. My job isn't to close people off because they're not where I want them to be. Um... It's like, and you can think about this in business too. My job is not to close off team members because they're not performing how I think they should perform. Nope. I am always here to hopefully offer direction and to hope, hopefully support you. I'm not here to run your business. I'm not here to enable you in bad uh, bad practices. I'm not here to let you use me. Does that make sense? For anything I'm willing to give or whatever. But I am here to say that I will be a positive mentor and influence in your life and will help you and laugh with you through things and cry with you through things and um, help give, give you great ideas that I hope that can work. Um, but none of that happens without you putting your effort into it. That's the truth. So stop judging people and saying, I'm going to, I'm going to show you, I'm going to cast you out of my life because you believe differently than me. Because you dress differently than me. Because you wear your hair differently than me. Because you only go to church once a week or maybe you go, you do your, you do your church online. You realize the devil is using those things. They're, he's using those things and you're letting the devil use you and your relationship and your judgment of what you think God wants to just send people further away from God. And I need you to know my God is not that person. Yes, you have to accept him as your personal savior. And yes, you should want to have a personal relationship with him and get to know him better through the word because that's how a relationship gets better. Hey, Kelly. But one thing for sure is 
me judging everybody for whatever their journey is, that's not helping anybody. It's not helping them, it's not helping me, and it's not helping their path to something better. It's easier said than done to just give things to Jesus. I need you to know that. Listen, I just spent a year, not even quite a year, it'll be a year in October, a year trying to learn how to give my fears and give give my worries and and give everything that I think hinders me to God and say, please fix it or show me how to deal with it. And the more that I was in his word and the more that I started reading my devotionals to help me understand the word and the more that I started listening to podcasts um, that would help me, that's what brought me to this. That's what brought me to um, realizing that in order for me to show you more Jesus, I have to have more Jesus in my life. And I know I cut up all the time, guys. I do. You know, Jesus take the whole car. Hashtag Jesus fix it. Um, that's how I've learned to get through this life. Because when it's something I can't handle, when it's something that somebody's being negative in a group, or somebody's being just a straight hoe bag, okay? Just going to put it out there. Did I have to say, Jesus, you have to fix this because I can't change your heart and I can't change your attitude. Yeah, that's what I do. That's what I do. And, and some days it's harder than other days. Some days, believe me, I, I feel the edge to want to go off. I feel that thing in me that says, you stop using me. Like, I know what people are doing, right? I know, you know, I know what people are doing when they come to me for this, for that, whatever. I realize it. I feel it. Because otherwise, they have nothing else to do with me. Right? Right? You know those people. And sadly, those people think that I don't know it. They think that, you know, I'm just a dumb, tall blonde. And um, that I don't realize what they're doing. And I do. But bad Bad actions and bad activities or underlying reasons for why people do things, that's not on me. That's on them. So for me, I just have to be consistent being me. Being me, for sure. Margie says, Jesus, take the... Girl, I know it's in my vocabulary all the time. Forget that take the wheel thing. He need to take the whole thing, girl. I know. So, so for me, it takes me saying, look, if you're attempting to use me, if you're attempting to um, use my want to to help people, if you're attempting to use that for, for, for your expansion, for, to make you look better, uh, to get one over on me, whatever it may be, your actions are on you. They're not on me. My job is to be who I am. My job is to be better, even if it's 1% better than the day before, which means you said you needed something for me. Here I am. This is what I have to give. And I hope that you find it useful, and I hope that it will help you, whether it's in life or business or with your kid. No matter what it is, I hope it does. So... Um, I think that the message for today is no matter what it is, quit saying, I can't handle this and start saying, we, we can, you and God can. Does that mean that just because you include him in your life that again, he's going to be that genie who pops out of the bottle and give you everything that you want? Guys. There's no part of life that works that way. Do you know how many times I've sat at the bed of somebody who is dying and I have said, please, God, heal them? Starting with my mom. Please, God, take this cancer away from them. Please, God, you know, 
heal them from COVID. Please, God. You know, I know they're 186 years old, God, but we don't want to miss them. Yeah, I've been that person too. Somebody get old, you know they've lived their life. You don't want them to go because you still love them. I'm that person. I'm a selfish person. But what I've realized is... <laughs> What I've realized is that sometimes when we ask God to heal and then we want to get mad at him because maybe that person does die, sometimes what happens is you realize that sometimes when something is so bad here on earth that somebody's body is going through and they just can't fight anymore, that the best thing that can happen to them is for God to completely heal them and just put his arms around them and take them to heaven and it's very sad for us and it is very hard for us and we are meant to love and we are meant to miss and we are meant to want to hold on but sometimes I believe that's how he answers prayer it doesn't mean I like it just sometimes I believe that's what happens so um, when you're going through it that's not easy. That's not easy to think of. But as I've now reached the ripe old age of 59 and have experienced so many things in my life, I realize that, yeah, yeah, sometimes I think what happens is when you're asking God to, to, to do, um, to heal somebody or to God to help you with something, don't forget that sometimes you are looking for, sometimes you're looking for a different outcome, right? Sometimes you're looking for, God, please show me what to do with my job. Please, God, I don't want to lose this job. Please, God, I don't want to lose my title. Please, God, I don't want to lose my sales. But in essence, something will happen that could lead you to something better. Like maybe there's a lesson to be learned. Like, you know, I'm like, oh... You know, I just, I just want this to be better. And then I have to wonder, I said I wanted more customers, but you know when our company hit some hitches and I had to get out there and I had to do a side hustle and I had to make up for money that I was losing, this side hustle has put me in contact with so many new people, with so many new businesses that when I said, God, I really am trying to build a business down here in North Carolina, and it's hard to do it if the company's not doing, you know, everything that I wish that they were doing, that things are just keep getting in the company's ways. There's so many struggles. And when this happened, and now going through that I've like, I've, I've got 35 new customers over the last six months. And I mean personal, in-person customers. I don't just mean online from my from my Google business page. I've got them from there too. But me going out and having to do this side hustle, if I hadn't done it, just sat there and, and pouted, God in his mind is scratching his head going, I provided a way. You had a way to go out to work to make more money, to make up what you may have been losing. And in the meantime, you can use that in order to build your business that you're talking about. You want more customers. You want more people to join you. And I've put you in a situation to talk to people, to share with people, to give out brochures, to give out samples, to smile, to laugh, to start a conversation. <clears throat> to warm people up with my smile. Thank you very much. And my witty ways. And I'm like, wow. When I really think of it, had I not been pushed to have to do this side hustle, I wouldn't have had the influx of customers I have right now. So, so sometimes I think we've got to go with it, guys. We've got to go with it and quit being angry about life or what happens that we don't like. Sometimes we swear that we know what's best for us. Kind of when you miss that person. I wanted to marry that person. I wanted to marry that person. It was a person who was the love of my life. And you know, you know Garth wrote a song about it, right? Garth Brooks wrote a song about it. Thank God for unanswered prayers because here he was looking at the woman that he ended up with and just 
being so eternally grateful that God didn't answer that prayer on this end because he had no clue what was waiting for him around the corner. So instead of sitting there fighting and trying to handle something alone, do what this says. When the way just ahead of you seems too difficult, turn to God and say, I can't, but we can. Sometimes you just have to hand it to him and tell him that you know he's got you and then move forward to do everything you can to make things better yourself, but stay in contact. You know, that's what you need to do. And in the end, you can't see it then, but you'll be able to look back and go, wow, I'm glad this happened. I'm glad that happened because I may not have fully believed it, but God really had me during that. Didn't mean it wasn't a struggle. Doesn't mean that it didn't require more of you. Didn't mean that during that learning process that it wasn't difficult, right? But what I do find is when you're in that communication with him, during your roughest times, man, it's good not to feel alone. Man, it's good to be able to go back and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for just giving me the strength to keep moving forward. I see now what was on my path. And thank you for giving me what you gave me. Thank you for sending me in the direction you sent me. Thank you for keeping me safe. Thank you. There's so many thank yous, God. There's so many thank yous. I can't even think of enough to give you. And, um, yeah, seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. You guys need to look it up. You need to read it for yourself. Because just when you think you can't get through something, well, here's one for you. If you're watching this, you're still here. That thing you thought you couldn't get through, you're here right now. You're here. And I didn't say you didn't come out scarred. And I didn't say you didn't come out a little damaged and a little beat up. But you came through it and you're going to be stronger for it. I promise. Give it time. Drop your anger. Love people. Leave the judge to Jesus. If you have to holler, Jesus, take the whole car, go ahead. Jesus, fix it. Go ahead. But realize when you're asking him to fix it, he may not be using the same mechanical engineering that you're thinking he should do, but his way is always better, no matter what. Okay? So I hope this has helped you. Um, my Avon peeps, I will see you tonight, okay, at uh, 8 o'clock in the Onward No Matter What group, and we are going to talk Avon, and we are going to talk Avon stories. And um, if you have a prayer, uh, if you have a request, feel free. You can put it here in the comments or, or make sure that you, you private message me, and um, I will get to them, and Lee and I will definitely pray. If you want to put it in the comments so we can pray for each other, um, that's what this is about. When one or two are gathered in his name, right? God hears us. And I'm a firm believer that that's one of the reasons that God made my healing happen. When all the, the, the tens of thousands of you that were praying for me during this thing with my kidney, God heard it and he decided to make something better out of it. But I think what he, I think he knew, but I didn't know was that it would change my journey with him. That it would make me look at him differently. And it made me look at the fact that life is precious and we need to live every day sharing him with people, sharing his love, but also just trying to do the best we can in this life. And that does mean have fun, laugh, cut up, cry, yell, scream, get mad. They're all his emotions too. Don't feel bad because you have a bad experience. He is there to see you through the bad experience every single day if you let him okay so have a wonderful day okay and if you have a bad day don't forget hashtag jesus fix it hashtag jesus take the whole car okay it work every time it make you feel better just saying bye